Hey drummers, I'm Brad Schluter, a contributor at Drum Magazine. George Lawrence Stone wrote his masterpiece, Stick Control, way back in 1935, and it's still the cornerstone of many drum teachers' instruction. It's a great snare technique book designed to improve a drummer's hands through various sticking patterns and rudiments. However, if you've been using Stick Control for years, you may not be getting as much out of it as you once did. That's just the way learning curves work. But by using a little imagination and creativity, you can transform stone sticking patterns into new workouts and fresh challenges. In this video, we'll check out a few different ways to do that. Some of these will result in practical grooves you can use on the gig, killer fill-in solo licks, or challenging timing and coordination exercises that will improve your meter and phrasing, all while challenging your mind. To keep this as simple as possible, I'm going to be expanding and transforming just one pattern from stick control. Exercise 6 from page 5. An inverted paradiddle, often referred to as an inward paradiddle, or the diddle in the middle paradiddle because it has a sticking of right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, with its double strokes or diddles in between the single strokes. Now you can use any of Stone's other sticking patterns in place of this particular one, and I recommend you do, but to keep things simple and easy to follow, we'll focus on just this one. Stone taught his students to use rebounding strokes, where the stick is thrown at the head and allowed to bounce back into your hand without help or interference. That looks something like this. One obvious way to enhance our pattern is to add rudiments to it. The next several clips show some ways to do that. If we add a flam to each double stroke, we'll be playing a rudiment known as a single flammed mill. If we combine a couple of these ideas together, we'll arrive at our next pattern, a hybrid rudiment known as a book report. This next idea will improve your ability to play accents on either note of a double stroke. We'll play our inverted paradiddle four times in a row, each time shifting the accents one sixteenth note later. Another thing we can do is add a foot pattern under our inverted paradiddle to work on our coordination. I'll be using a brush and a stick so you can hear the sticking pattern more clearly. Let's start by playing our hand pattern over bass drum notes on counts 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now let's try it with a samba foot pattern with a hi-hat on 2 and 4 and the bass drum on 1, the end of 2, three, and the end of four. Now let's try it with a bione foot pattern with a kick drum playing on one, the end of two, and four. Displacing our hand pattern over foot pattern is a great way to improve our timing and mental focus. 
For this next one, I'll alternate my feet on the beats while playing the pattern with my hands. Then I'll shift my hands one sixteenth note later. Now let's try something a little easier. We'll play our hand pattern twice and shift our bass drum note an eighth note later underneath it. If that was too easy, this next one may not be. This time we'll use our bass drum and hi-hat alternately. Since the second and fourth measures have five notes played with the feet, they'll reverse order in every other measure. Another coordination challenge is to play the inverted paradiddle with our hands and our feet simultaneously, but at two different speeds. This may twist your brain into knots. Let's take our sticking pattern and double the speed of it in the middle of the measure. This causes our hands to reverse at the beginning of each bar. If you remember our flan mill pattern earlier, we can apply the rudiment to this same idea by adding a flam on each double stroke. Let's play our inverted paradiddle sticking as triplets. Since it's eight notes long, it'll shift over our feet each time it begins and it'll take two measures to resolve. If we accent the first note of each inverted paradiddle, this will create a 4 over 3 polyrhythm. Our feet are still alternating underneath all this mayhem. Next, let's play our single flam mill rudiment, but with a different accent pattern. This new accent creates a hybrid rudiment known as a choo-choo since it sounds a little like a locomotive train. I'll be playing this again as triplets, but this time over our inverted paradiddle foot pattern.
Another way to use stone stickings polyrhythmically is to play our inverted paradiddle on every third sixteenth note over an alternating foot pattern. This will result in another four over three polyrhythm, and since we're in three four meter, our feet reverse in every measure. This next pattern is trickier. Let's play a 5 over 4 polyrhythm, but let's divide the 5 note groups into smaller groups of 2 and 3. This is a good mental workout that will help your coordination and timing. Now let's do essentially the same thing, but this time let's break our five note groups into groups of three and two rather than two and three. This creates a different pattern that's equally challenging and useful. Now let's make some beats with this sticking. If we play our patterns right hand notes on our bass drum and left hand notes on the snare, adding eighth notes on the hi-hat, we'll make this funky groove. Let's take that same idea, but this time play our hi-hat on all the ands and open on the and of three for more upbeat feeling groove. We can take that pattern and open the hi-hats on all the ands resulting in a funky disco style pattern. For this next beat, I'm going to play my inverted paradiddle with my hands and double my right hand part with my right foot. That sounds like this. Another way to create linear sounding beats is to play our sticking pattern between our hands and drop the bass drum note underneath it. Let's try it with a funkier bass drum part, and I'll open the hi-hat on the of three this time. If we bring our right hand off the hi-hat to play a loud snare on count three, we can create a funky halftime beat. Stone sticking patterns also work great for fills. Just moving your hand from drum to drum sounds surprisingly hip. First I'll demonstrate the inverted paradiddle played as a fill, moving my right hand down the toms. Then I'll use the same sticking for my beat.
Depending on where we place our accents, we can even use our sticking to create a fill that works with a triplet based groove. I'll demonstrate the fill first, then play it with a groove. Another way to use our sticking is to develop our hand foot coordination. This next pattern simply inserts one bass drum note between each snare stroke. How about using that idea to create a cool double bass fill? If I insert two bass drum notes between each hand stroke, I can create a 16th note triplet pattern. And if I add my toms and snare, I'll get a really cool soloing lick out of it. Now let's take our inverted paradiddle and play it in a shuffle rhythm. We can use this idea to create a soloing lick by inserting a bass drum note on all the rests and moving our hands around the kit. Let's use this new shuffle variation to create some cool beats. I'll play our patterns right hand notes on my kick drum and left hand notes on the snare like I did earlier while playing quarter notes on the hi-hat. Let's use that shuffle sticking as our hand pattern and layer our feet underneath it. I'll add an open hi-hat on the uh of beat 2. For this next groove, I'll borrow an idea from the great drummer Jeff Porcaro. I'm going to play the bass drum pattern he used on Toto's song Rosanna under that shuffle hand pattern. Porcaro's groove had a cool rolling quality, while this one has a more broken one that might suit a funk tune well. Let's take our original hand pattern to play a two-handed ride and hi-hat groove. To make this more interesting, I'll play the bass drum on every third sixteenth note so it cycles underneath the hands polymetrically. These beats are great for your coordination as well as your concentration. Now let's play our kick and snare paradiddle pattern again, but this time let's play every third sixteenth note on the bell of our ride, something the great Gavin Harrison refers to as overriding.
I hope this has given you some new ways to explore Stone's superb book. I'm Brad Schluter. Thanks for watching.